So next I'd like to call up Richard, if Richard come join us. Richard is the fleet manager with the city of Oakland, who has been a long time advocate for renewable diesel, and we thank him for coming up and sharing a bit of a, an end user perspective. Hello, um, before I get started, how many folks heard about renewable diesel before this event? Show of hands. Great, okay, good, good. That means the word's getting out there. Um, I'm Richard Battersby, I'm the fleet manager for the city of Oakland. I've also been the director of the East Bay Clean Cities Coalition for quite some time now. Uh, I'd tell you how long, but that would make me sound old. Um, before we get started, I think the first two presenters did a really good job covering uh, the benefits and the reasons why we're using re renewable diesel, but I want to point out another one. If you notice in that picture up there, there's a slight difference. Renewable diesel is good for growing hair. <clears throat> So not only can you lower your carbon footprint, reduce emissions, but you can also become a member. Uh, a little bit about the Oakland fleet. We got about 1,400 motorized units, another 175 fuel-powered units. Those could be uh, stationary generators, roller compactors. It's things that don't move under their own power. Out of those 1,400 units, you can see over half of them belong to the Oakland Police Department. Very few of them are diesel. So right off the top, uh, when I'm looking at a product uh, like for a diesel substitute, I'm, uh, the size of my fleet's been cut in half. But then you could see the next line, Oakland Public Works, uh, about half of the vehicles are diesel powered. And then another significant uh, diesel vehicle density is found in the Oakland Fire Department that has 85 diesel vehicles. 55 of those are frontline fire apparatuses. Those are the emergency units that respond to the fires. If you watch the news the last couple of days, you saw some of our aerial units out at the scene of a, a real tragic incident. All of our vehicles are powered on renewable diesel, and believe me, I wouldn't be putting this fuel in my fire apparatus if I was concerned about reliability, because it's a very serious business that we're engaged in. Um, Oakland fleet units by fuel type, 975 or so of those are powered by gasoline. 381 are now powered by renewable diesel. They used to be diesel powered, but we've also got compressed natural gas, propane, hybrid, battery electric, um, you name it, we got it in the fleet. Myself as a fleet manager, I've run pretty much every alternative fuel that's available out there except for liquefied natural gas, and that was simply because I haven't managed a fleet in that application. Uh, the number of fueling facilities, some folks are a little bit surprised, some are impressed. We have two main fueling facilities, one's at the Corp Yard that has gasoline and diesel. The other one services the police department, which as you've probably figured out is mainly gasoline. But we've also got quite a few fire stations. So I've got 25, 24 fire stations that have their own fuel supplies and we also have three large emergency generator facilities including the 911 call center. Um, those are all operated on renewable diesel. Uh, our annual fuel consumption is about 700,000 gallons. So you can see a little bit over half of that's gasoline. 230,000, give or take, is renewable diesel, and about 75,000 is natural gas. That's a really nice pie chart. Uh, one of the interesting things about the renewable diesel, when you look at this pie chart, realize that if, if the colors were to symbolize fossil fuel versus alternative fuel, um, what's red and green was previously all fossil fuel, so by switching to the renewable diesel added to our compressed natural gas, we're just a little bit under 50% alternative fuel use in the city of Oakland. Uh, we've been using it since October 2015. Since then, we've ran through about 400,000 gallons. I'll get into a little bit of our experiences down the road, um, but it, to summarize, it's been uneventful. I mentioned I use the diesel in all of our diesel-powered vehicles and also our fire apparatuses, but uh, we also use it in off-road equipment. So if you can imagine how difficult it is to find an alternative fuel-powered backhoe or an alternative fuel-powered roller compactor, guess what? October 2015, all of our diesel equipment became alternative fuel. Not just alternative fuel, it's a low-carbon alternative fuel. Um, there are several procurement options if you're a municipality, I understand, because I've been in this business. Uh, sometimes procurement is a challenge. There's numerous options out there. If you want, you can go out to spot bids when you need fuel. Just send out a solicitation. Uh, believe it or not, there's multiple sources that can bid on your spot bids. You can go out to bid yourself with an RFP, or there's numerous contracts that you can piggyback on. Um, I've listed a couple of them here, but since I, I prepared this slide, there's many more out there. Our renewable diesel experiences, uh, I think this was covered previously, 
there's no equipment modifications required. There's no infrastructure modifications required. So when we <clears throat> first heard about renewable diesel, um, believe it or not, I heard about renewable diesel probably about 2010, 2011, and it was Mr. Rick Ruvalo in the back there from the city county of San Francisco. He called me up and he says, hey, Richard, uh, what do you know about renewable diesel? And I says, oh, biodiesel. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, a lot of it. And he said, no, no, this is not biodiesel. This is renewable diesel. I said, hmm, hadn't heard of it. I said, I'm going to start a file. And that was a quote. And, and since then, I, I'm, I mentioned that because I'm... I'm hadn't heard of it before that time. And I started following the fuel, and that's, this is, I may be getting ahead of myself here. Um, the fuel has been in use in California for quite some time now, at least going back since 2010. It was being brought into California and mixed with the standard petroleum diesel fuel supply in the state to meet the low carbon fuel standard. And the production or the use gradually ramped up to over 100 million gallons a year, uh, and folks just didn't know it. So all those fleets out there that, you know, aren't real receptive to alternative fuels, they, you know, I'm, I'm diesel power, I love it. Guess what? They've been using renewable diesel in some component for at least the last seven years. Um, we didn't empty our fuel tanks. When I talk about an easy fuel transition, um, very uh, small additional expense, cents per gallon. In fact, it's negligible. We didn't have to flush out the tanks. Once I figured out the contract status, I just picked up the phone call, and literally the next day we had a delivery. We were a renewable diesel fleet. There have been no performance issues. In fact, if we hadn't told the drivers, drivers are typically the first uh, source of negative comments, and right behind them will be the mechanics. But we didn't tell them we're switching to renewable diesel. It, you know, fuel truck shows up, it doesn't have big green leaves on the side, uh, which by the way, Pat, where are you at? I know you're out there somewhere. Uh, Golden Gate Petroleum has been a, a vendor that I'm familiar with for over 10 years. In fact, he used to purchase biodiesel from him many years ago. Very reputable vendor. Um, I heard that they were the distributor in the area, so that, again, further allayed any concerns that I might have. But getting back to the original point, drivers didn't say a word. Nobody noticed. Mechanics didn't say a word. Nobody noticed. Well, a little bit later, Neste came out, and we did a little press event, and uh, it was the TV crews came out, and it was in the newspaper. And then folks said, hey, are we using renewable diesel? I said, yeah, yeah, aren't you worried about it? No, not really, we haven't had any problems yet. Oh, okay. Um, one of the, the clients that actually I did coordinate with was the fire department, because really one thing you don't want to do when it comes to law enforcement or emergency response units, you don't want to make changes without getting them on board. Uh, we did run the renewable diesel in our standard diesel fleet uh, for a period of time just to make sure and also to alleviate any concerns that fire department might have. But the bottom line is we've been uh, complaint free ever since we made the switch. There's been no issues with our diesel particulate filters, which if you're a fleet operator, you know, some also known as particulate matter traps, PM traps, the devices that actually filter the exhaust coming out of diesel vehicles. Um, these devices capture the particulate matter, and they are very sensitive to certain aspects. Biodiesel has caused some concerns with particulate filters. We've not experienced any with renewable diesel. In fact, uh, I don't have good data because I didn't have good data before we started using renewable diesel. But the bottom line is if you have 33% less particulate matter material coming into the exhaust, going into that filter, your service periods are going to be extended. If you operate a fleet, you know that you have to regenerate your diesel particulate traps, basically have to burn off the accumulated particulate matter, and also you have to service them at some point. Sometimes you even have to remove the particulate, the strata inside the filter material, and send it out and have it baked in a high temperature oven. So I, I certainly feel that having 33% less particulate matter going in is going to result in a 20 to 30 percent reduction in service time, which also translates to reduced downtime, by the way, because unless you have a stock of particulate traps on the shelf, when your filter goes out for service, that truck's not on the road working. Uh, to sum it up, I, I love this quote, and it's not just because I made it up. Renewable diesel is remarkably unremarkable, and when you think about it as a fleet operator, that's exactly what you want. You don't want the hassles, you don't want the headaches. Um, I, I know I was introduced as an advocate of renewable diesel. I'm actually an advocate for any fuel that helps us achieve our mission and also lowers impact on the environment. That's how I got involved with clean cities in the first place. 
uh, going way back in the 90s, and we've tried all the fuels under the sun, believe me. Switching to renewable diesel has been the easiest decision and the easiest transition I've ever made. Uh, talking about the length of time the fuel's been in use, sort of under the radar, this is the Energy Commission slide, which after Rick brought it to my attention, I was doing a little research, and I ran across this slide. I was like, holy cow, look at all that renewable diesel in the state. We'd actually been producing in California, going back even further since 2009, 2008. I'm with Clean Cities Coalition. I'm supposed to be, I'm, some people consider me an expert. I don't think so, but knowledgeable. I'm involved in the industry. I had never heard of renewable diesel for years, and the numbers are significant. And then I threw in another slide from Department of Energy. Um, I was looking for a more current one, but I guess this is something they don't look at regularly, so the most current slide I had is 2015. But this just shows the renewable diesel imports and also biodiesel by month. And you look at the numbers there, that's right around the 25 million gallons a month coming into this country. There, so it's not just California that's been using this fuel for a while and in significant quantities. It's the entire United States. Um, and although the market's primarily on the West Coast, let me clarify. Uh, in Oregon and California, I don't know if this uh, topic was brought up, but the, the market is ready because these are, in my opinion, the more progressive states that have structured incentive programs and policies that encourage the use of the fuel here. Um, and then the biggest question that I think you should have as a fleet operator, if you're putting fuel in an underground storage tank, you want to know, is, is this fuel compatible? Uh, with biodiesel, you, uh, if you operate a fleet, you know diesel blends over B20 are problematic in the state because of the um, Water Resources Control Board regulation. But the ARB and uh, Water Resources Control Board have certified that renewable diesel is to be treated just like ultra-low sulfur diesel. So any concerns you might have about underground storage tanks, they don't exist for renewable diesel. And finally, that goes to questions. I don't, we probably don't have time for questions, but... Um, that concludes my presentation, and before I go, I just want to make clear, I think I have the easiest job here today. All I have to do is come up here and talk about making a simple decision, establishing a contract and making a phone call. We've got, you know, the scientists and the marketing folks and, and lobbyists out here. Well, I'm just the guy that put the fuel in my trucks, and if it helps you make the decision yourself, I'm, I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the question is putting renewable diesel in emergency generators and shelf life. We, on the larger generators, we have to polish the fuel anyway, so we're already on a cycle. Um, you know, hopefully the, no issues develop, but the problem when you're talking about shelf life is it takes years to see what's going to happen. Right now we, we have renewable diesel in our 911 call center generator. We do have a backup plan if there is, a, is an issue, but we don't expect any. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great question because I belong to several national fleet organizations and through the Clean Cities Network, uh, we've actually done presentations to all of the 90-odd uh, Clean Cities Coalition throughout the nation. Um, there's incredible interest in the fuel just because it is so easy to deploy. Right now, there's um, uh, availability is probably the biggest obstacle. I think fleets out there are um, willing to pay a little bit more for renewable diesel if that is in fact um, how it develops because you don't have the infrastructure costs, you don't have the additional cost for the equipment modification. So if you look at the total life cycle, even if you're paying a little bit more for the fuel, you know, maybe that's acceptable. I actually went out and did a presentation in the Denver area to a consortium and they were trying to figure out how they could bring the fuel into the Denver Boulder area as a region and then figure out how they're gonna make it work. So yes, there is interest. Um, and we also operate somewhat uniquely. A lot of the city of Oakland equipment is, shall I say, seasoned or mature. That's a, a politically correct way of saying we have some really old stuff out there. And a lot of our diesel vehicles are retrofitted with the plug-in, the old um, um, Clear Air Horizon units, so they plug into voltage. And we've gotten in the habit of when those vehicles come in for service, we just plug them in whether they need it or not, because we know that's better than having that street sweeper stranded on the side of the road. Give you a nice little thank you bag for being with us today, and I appreciate it. And, uh, thank you, sir. We look forward to seeing you around these things again.